Excuse me, little dog. <clears throat> Hi, guys. It is actually turning into a bit of a pleasant day here, finally, on... <coughs> it is, I think it is Good Friday. I've never known what Good Friday means. I think it is Good Friday, April 15th, 2022. I know there's something I'm supposed to be doing on April 15th. Uh... But anyway, while I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to be doing on April 15th, oh yes, one thing that I do and we all need to do on April 15th, let's wish <coughs> our Doomer Chick sister in arms, Sandy Shellis, gonna wish her a happy birthday, happy birthday to my sister from another mister, I guess is what I call Sandy, so uh, and Sandy just letting uh, anyone interested that Sandy told me she understands that Hambone Little Tail lost his appeal to YouTube. That COVIDiot lost his appeal to YouTube. So we won't be hearing anything out of that idiot's mouth for a while. And he may or may not be dying of corona panic. It's unclear whether Hambone is but uh <clears throat> as far as i'm concerned i really appreciate all you people so concerned about my health so that finally happened i went and got tested so i tested negative i have no fever and my blood oxygen level is 97 which is pretty close to 100 so at least sam mitchell uh has something other than corona panic probably oak pollen <coughs> which is covering everything including my lungs and as long as we're down here in the doomosphere uh, <coughs> I want to tip my hat to my buddy Elliot Jacobson I know Elliot you're concerned about my health for whatever reason uh, <coughs> So Elliot, I noted it over on Twitter, what he's really getting his panties in a wide and pissing off a lot of people, I guess, in Extinction Rebellion over this latest letter of uh, warning, I guess, from all of these scientists uh, about, you, you know, how doomed we are and what we're going to do about it. Their advice for turning this freight train around. <coughs> I did have this whole story. Uh, I was going to lead off my Hopium Roundup rant tomorrow with this, but uh, since <coughs> the Hopium Roundup rant is already overflowing, we're just going to make a separate rant because Elliot ask me specifically uh, to read this letter to the world out and give my comments to see if they align with his pretty well and uh, you can find Elliot's comments uh, elsewhere but I think Elliot you will agree that my comments <coughs> somewhat align with yours but let's hear the uh, let's uh, hear the letter. Okay, and uh, I noticed uh, <clears throat> Peter Kalmus from NASA, uh, one of the signatories to this. So anyway, uh, this is their demands letter from scientistrebellion.com. The letter below was written collectively by Scientist Rebellion and outlines our positions and demands. Take it away, <clears throat> Scientist Rebellion. We are scientists and academics who believe we should expose the reality and severity of the climate and ecological emergency by engaging in nonviolent civil disobedience. Unless those best placed 
to understand behave as if this is an emergency, we cannot expect the public to do so. Some believe that appearing alarmist is detrimental, but we are terrified by what we see and believe it is both vital and right to express our fears openly. The population size of mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles have seen an alarming average drop of 68% since 1970, along with an apparent collapse in the pollinator populations. At this rate, ecosystems around the world will collapse well within the lifespan of current generations with catastrophic consequences for the human kind. Yes, catastrophic consequences for the human kind. Self-reinforcing feedbacks within the climate system in which hotter climate in which hotter climates cause additional heating, such as and e.g. increased forest fires, thawing permafrost, melting ice, threaten to drive the earth irreversibly to a hot and uninhabitable state. These effects are being observed decades earlier than predicted in line with the worst case scenarios predicted as uh, I have reported on this that now that the you know the historical data is in and we and we can look back on these uh, predictions from 20 30 years ago over and over it again it is the worst case scenario or the worse than worst case scenario uh, unfolding on the planet. <clears throat> Increasingly severe heat waves, droughts, and natural disasters are occurring year after year while sea levels may rise by several meters this century. Okay, I, 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 I wish they, they, I, I wish that they had, uh, you know, put some sort of documentation. According to this group of scientists, uh, including Peter Kalmus at NASA, put his name to the Senate, sea levels may rise by several meters this century, displacing hundreds of millions of people living in coastal areas. There is a growing fear among scientists that simultaneous extreme weather events in major agricultural areas could cause global food shortages, thus triggering societal collapse. All right. For example, the drought in Syria destroyed much of the country's agriculture and livestock driving millions into cities and sparking a civil war from which the world is still reeling. <coughs> we, I guess the rest of the planet outside of Syria, face a crisis possibly hundreds of times more severe. To be informed is to be alarmed. <coughs> the new definition uh, for being informed in 2022 is to be alarmed. Current actions and plans are grossly inadequate and even these obligations are not being met. The rate of environmental destruction closely tracks economic growth, which leads us to extracting more resources from Earth than are regenerated. Governments and corporations aim to increase 
increase growth and profits, inevitably accelerating the destruction of life on Earth. Okay. So before we get around to what the, the scientists at Scientist Rebellion are going to suggest about what we're going to do with it, so far, so far, I am 100% in solidarity with these. I am not a scientist, okay? I have been reading the science of ecological collapse, you know, good Lord, uh, pretty much for the past six, good Lord, 16, year, 14 years at least, 14 years I have been studying the science everything they have said here so far is 100% correct. So now, of course, we get to hear uh, what exactly the scientists think we are going to do about this. <clears throat> I'm just going to read this through and then come back and break it down. All right. To achieve decarbonization on the required scale demands economic degrowth, at least in the short term. This does not necessarily a require a reduction in living standards. All right, bullet number two. For a just transition, the cost of degrowth must be paid for by the wealthiest who have benefited enormously from the current destructive world order while others have faced the consequences. I think I addressed that one well enough yesterday in my rant about Somalia, so I don't need to revisit that. Uh, a just transition to a sustainable system requires the wealth from the 1% to be used for the common benefit. Uh, I think Richard Heinberg uh, beat that one into the ground. That uh, I, I don't know if this is scientist rebellion or comedian rebellion. Uh, there's not a damn person signing this uh, who believes for one second for one millisecond that uh, the top 1% are going to use their wealth for the common benefit. Okay, and finally, the most effective means of achieving systemic change in modern history is through nonviolent civil resistance we call on academics, scientists, and the public to join us in civil disobedience to demand emergency decarbonization and degrowth facilitated by wealth distribution. All right, so we're going to go back to the first bullet and the last one. We've already covered the middle two. All right. To achieve decarbonization on the required scale demands economic degrowth, at least in the short term. Uh, I will agree with that. And then we have the knee slapper. This does not, this does not necessarily require a reduction in living standards. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Uh, who was it? I, I'm pretty sure if you look up my interview with Terry Spar, I'm pretty sure, S-P-A-H-R. Elliot, if you have not listened to my interview with Terry Spar, I think it was Terry who uh, has broken all of this down to what it would look like for a planet of maybe even two billion. I, I can't remember <coughs> what it would look like for humans to be a sustainable species on this planet. 
uh, I have already reduced my own personal carbon and environmental footprint on this planet probably by 90% uh, in 2008. And I, uh, and I fully understand that if 8 billion people tried to live my lifestyle, okay, uh, that the world would last about a week before blowing up. For anybody, any scientist to make that absurd statement, we might as well go listen to the, you know, those conspiracy wackos talking about Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum, you will have nothing and you will be happy. Okay. And I, I, of course, guys, you, uh, you do notice that the words, you won't even see the word population, much less overpopulation anywhere in this letter. No mention of it. When I, th there's this uh, mainstream media article where they actually interview uh, Peter uh, Kalmus from uh, NASA. Uh, I guess he was chaining himself to some bank building or something, whatever they were doing as part of their protest. And what he's talking about is his children. I have no idea how many of the signatories to this letter are breeders, but you better. Believe, my guess is it probably reflects the uh, you know just the normal population, which probably means that 90% of these people in here are breeders, and this is the reason you are not going to see the word population or overpopulation in here and you sure as shit are not going to see the word depopulation alongside the word degrowth. They have no problem using the term growth no problem using the term degrowth, but they will not breathe the word, even the P word, much less the O word, much less the D word. <clears throat> this, uh, this, uh, it, it makes a laughing stock out of this letter. Uh... You know, this is, it's a, it's a joke, an absolute joke to sit here and put this letter to the, this warning letter to the world about ecological destruction of this planet without mentioning the number one reason for the ecological destruction of the planet, and it is not climate change. It is not climate change. Climate change is one symptom of the problem. The problem is humans. If the problem is humans, the solution is to reduce the number of humans. A human who has never been born has a carbon slash ecological footprint of zero. There is no way to reduce your carbon ecological footprint to zero. And, and even killing yourself doesn't work. There is one way to have, a, a, the, to have a, a, a footprint of zero, and that's not to have a footprint because you don't have any feet because you were never born. So, the most effective means of achieving systemic change in modern history is through nonviolent civil resistance. 
I would recommend the nonviolent civil resistance I took at age 22. At age 22, there is one nonviolent civil resistance that you can take to save this planet at this point. And at this point, even it's getting to be a joke, the vasectomy clinic is on the right, the tubal ligation clinic is on the left. Get yourself sterilized and do not breed. It, it, it is the most subversive, civil, disobedient action you can perform is to tell this whole global industrial society to go and that's the way to do it. Stop breeding. You know, I, I, I'm not sure how scientists' rebellion uh, how loosely or strongly they're affiliated with this group Extinction Rebellion. Uh, you know, the reason, the, the problem I've had with Extinction Rebellion, what extinction are they rebelling against? If they're rebelling against the extinction of every other species of human, I mean of human, of earthling other than humans, there is one way to effectively rebel against the extinction of every species of earthling other than humans. There is one way to do it. Get yourself sterilized and do it before you have your first kid. And, but my guess is it implies human extinction rebellion. Uh, and as I, I, I am a proud, unrepentant, unapologetic cheerleader of the voluntary human extinction movement. Uh, I am not rebelling against human extinction. I am cheering on human extinction through the voluntary human extinction movement, which you better believe will never be endorsed by this group of breeders. Okay. Talking about one subset of the problem. Uh... The people who understand what the problem is. The few people who understand what the problem is and have the vasectomized balls to admit it are as anyone uh, who is part of the voluntary human extinction movement. This is the movement I am part of. Anyway, uh, Elliot, I hope that answers your question about uh, my comments on uh, that letter from Concerned Breeder Scientist. But uh, since it is a good Friday, but it is Friday, so of course uh, <coughs> we're going to come back with uh, my regular Friday rant where we're going to go over to mongabay.com and find out what's on the minds of Rhett Butler, the old breeder Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com. Coming up in one minute. Bye, guys.